Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy, Aga Hot Soup here today. And today we're going to be looking at what is the best hybrid in the game. Guys, first off, we're gonna, we're gonna cut out all the obvious ones. Obviously, uh, ha ha, ha ha ha. All right, uh, these are probably all gone. These are probably all gone. All right, now we're in. Now we're in. The, now we're in the the big leagues, the big dogs, the big boys. Um, this one's probably not the best. The, these ones. Okay, here are the ones that actually matter, right? So you might be wondering, how come I didn't just automatically give it to Church Night Necromancer? Um, well, the thing is, is that we are considering. I'm pretty sure this was a preener first off, but even then. All those are gone, so we can't even go those right now. All we can really do is just get... Oh wait, that's, it didn't mean that. Uh, then never mind. But anyway, all I'm saying is that when it comes down to it, we gotta take a look at all these because they, they're all played differently. And I've seen, for example, Great... Where is it? Where the heck is Great Sword Necromancer? Great Sword Necromancer. Just kill Church Knight Necromancers or Church Knight Dragon Knights. So, Again, we're going to be taking a look at all these and giving a grade based on how good I think each of them are. There's already a grade here. Just ignore that. We're just going to ignore that. Uh, ignore that. First off, Assassin Necromancer. See, the thing about Assassin Necromancer is that if you're using Snap Tenebris, right? Let's say you got Snap Tenebris. Wow, wow, wow. Throw the triple dagger strike, right? You're going to be putting a ton of pressure on them. So this, this has really good pressure, but uh, the damage will we'll have to see about the damage because it doesn't have that many moves but the damage can be really good and especially if you're a navarin you can just go stupid crazy i'm gonna give this one a nine this is a really good great sword monk great sword monk is, this is a six again there's nothing really too useful maybe you can like knock them down then m2 them when they're on the ground nothing really too useful assassin akuma while it's nice you can break their leg and then the bane on top of that will make it do a lot of damage you know, you're not really gonna have any of those moves that will like do a ton of damage. You're gonna have to keep relying on your rising dragons and your banes and maybe your triple dagger throws, but after that you're just gonna be trying to go up and M1 them. Um so I'm gonna give this one a seven. Sojourn Knight Necromancer, guys. Sojourn Knight Necromancer. The only way Sojourn Knight Necromancer literally works is if you're a Navern. So you already have to be a Navern, which is reducing your place already. And if anything, I would just go Solens. Like, like Solens would just outdo the damage of a Sigil Knight Necromancer. Not only are you missing out on Hyper Body, you're missing out on that, uh, was it that free protection from Insta Kills? But you're just doing less damage in general. Now I don't know if Sigil Knight Necromancers can get um, White Flame Charge, but even if, they, even if they could, it doesn't change much. I'm gonna give it an eight, uh, maybe a seven point five. I don't know. Church Knight Monk. Uh, this is like a, a seven. Again, nothing really too crazy about it. Yeah, it's just seven. It's not nothing really too good. Dragonite Akuma. Okay, so I, um, Dragonite Akuma. See, the thing is, guys, is that like Dragonite Akuma can do a lot of damage, just raw damage. The moves do a lot. The Dragon Blood plus Akuma hit that Rising Dragon, and then when they're on the ground, hit the Spear Crusher. That's gonna hurt. That's really gonna hurt. And if they're Navrin, Demon Flip, Spear Crusher. Oh my lord. That does a lot of damage, so I'm kind of I'm kind of hyped for this one. I'm gonna give this one a nine, personally. Cause I've seen I, I haven't seen too much of it yet, but I, oh wait, you wouldn't even be able to do that. Hold up, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put it back down to eight because I just realized you can't demon flip and spear crusher because you can't have a spear when doing demon flip, or you can't like use that move when doing demon flip. So never mind. I'm gonna have to reduce it, but still I I still think it's an eight point five. Church Knight Illusionist. Uh, we're just gonna give this one a solid uh, eight. Illusionist is uh, Church Knight Akuma. The only reason why I'm giving it an eight is because you can get snaps and shit with Illusionist. But other than that, is like eh, eight. Church Knight Akuma. Ooh, that one's pretty good. Damage. You know, you can do the Light Piercer Leg Break. I'm gonna give that one a nine. Very solid. Great Sword Akuma. Classical, but I'm gonna have to give it a seven, man. Like it's just not as good as it used to be. Maybe you can hit the. Okay, no, I'll give it a seven point five. How about that? Great sword, Kuma. You can maybe hit the leg breaker. Like you M2 them, leg breaker. Lots of mana shield breaking opportunities, but you're just slow. You're not doing much. Now all these are generally slow, but again, with great sword, Kuma, it's just the M2 is so predictable. 
Now with Great Sword Necromancer, guys, I'm gonna have to give this one a 9.5. I'm not biased, but I'm giving it a 9.5. The mix of opportunities, there's so many. Now with these, uh, with Church Knight Illusionist, you may be like, oh, there's mix up opportunities with Church Knight Illusionist. Well, yeah, th th that may be true. You know, shoot at Snap Tenor Bridge, shoot the Light Piercer, but with Great Sword Necromancer, bro, you got Wrathful Leap emulated, man. I'm telling you, but you don't, you shouldn't have to rely on emulation for this to be good, which is unfortunately kind of how it is. So I'm gonna have to actually uh, jump back down. Said I, my bad. I'm yawning. I'm a little tired. Anyway, now we're gonna go to the the, the top tier, the, the the cream of the crop. Obviously, these are nines automatically based off straight off the jump. However, I would like to argue that we kind of have a a, a a tier that we can choose from for which is the best, the best hybrid class. And, and again, and again, again, this is just my opinion. I kind of started there, but this is just my opinion. Assassin Necromancer versus Greatsword Necromancer. I'm gonna have to give it to Greatsword Necromancer. Just my opinion. Too much. The damage is crazy, man. The damage just stacks up so crazy. Uh, Church Knight versus Church Dragon Knight. Uh, this is really up to opinion. IMO. You kind of need a. I mean, you don't need to have. Tenebris does do a lot of damage, but this also does a lot of damage. I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna give it to Church Knight Necromancer, just because Snap Tenebris is really annoying. Finally, Dragon Knight versus Greatsword Necromancer. Or Dragon Knight Necromancer. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it to the boy. Let me look at it. Let me look at it, guys. I don't know. You know what? I'll just say that these top three, right? These are the top three right here. You can rank them accordingly. My personal list goes um for like the top three IMO uh like top builds maybe church knight necromancer because you know any church knight necromancer you don't have to have an average to be good with church knight necromancer um dragon knight necromancer because you know i've seen it done pretty well before and the snap tenebris plus pierce crusher plus dragon blood really hurts dragon great sword necromancer because the build opportunities are there with wrathful leap then after that church knight dragon knight and then Assassin Necromancer. That was my top five, guys. That's all you need to hear if you came to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, new video soon. I don't know, guys. We'll see. We'll see. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.